So this is going to be a very short report uh, from, from this workshop. Uh, before this workshop, we asked a number, uh, well, the participants to, to do some prior work and, and, and come up with their vision, which could be a fictional vision, or had to be a fictional vision, of, of a my data or of a data future. Uh, those were the questions that, that we asked. I'm not going to uh, uh, into them very deeply. And so uh, we selected a few of those uh, of those uh, propositions as as triggers to, to our to our thinking. So the first one that we selected was one that was all about how badly humans make choices and how good it is to actually give delegate that to uh, smarter machines and 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 the collective wisdom that may be uh, embedded uh, within what, what, what they do. And, and it ends up with the dating part, uh, but there's several other kinds of decisions that really uh, the writer speaking in the first person feels that she's really bad at. Uh, he, I think, here in, in this case. Uh, and that includes, uh, that includes dating and, and, and choosing uh, partners. So, but in the end, the result is that he doesn't even date at this stage until he get, gets to 31 and then the machine thinks that this is, it's now time uh, for serious relationships and then we can probably find you someone for whom it's time as well. Uh, so we, we, we thought we'd start with a discussion on personalization as, you know, the, the case where machines will make choices that are supposed to be good for you or that to represent what you're interested in and we ask people to uh, think about what they f would find uh, creepy or comfy positive in, in a uh, future data world and it sort of came up with uh, a number of, of ideas, items that would represent the creepiness or the comfiness and also a third space uh, which is the space of Things that are not by themselves creepy or comfy, but things that are related to the state of technology or of, of, of technology implementation. That it, this is not working well today, but in the future, uh, when we've solved this or that question, then it might end up working uh, better and, and providing what we're expecting. So you, this might not be super uh, surprising. So. The creepy is, of course, about security, but m more about the violation of personal space or of trust. That is, somebody said that it was a machine or it was not a machine and it's a machine or that it was this organization, but in fact it's someone else or that it was going to do something, but in fact it, it doesn't really do what it, what it said it would do. Um, all about decisions being opaque, and not understandable, not susceptible of appeal, uh, not susceptible of any kind of conversation around it, and this idea that it all ends up knowing just one me, uh, which is probably one, the, the biological me or the official me, and, and, and is not able to acknowledge the fact that I may have different kinds of personalities. On the comfortable side, we like convenience, uh, the tailor-made, the proactive, things that, that uh, know or do things without us having to uh, uh, discuss it. And then some symmetric characteristics to the uh, creepy part, which is what, uh, when it's open to discussion, when uh, it opens up new horizons rather than narrowing our horizons. Um, and when the system is not that deterministic, when there's some elements of randomness, or when it can actually be influenced by me as much as I can influence it. Uh, and, and so after that, that was sort of generic. It was not my data specific, and it, it was by purpose like that. So we, we, we started uh, focusing the discussion a little bit on the my data narrative, starting from this, which I'm not going to describe uh, in depth, but which would be like representing the happy my data vision as we uh, 
or, or at least me, <laughs> as I, as one of the co-writers of my data declaration, would describe that world uh, uh, if it worked ideally. So it's a work of a world of empowered individuals, of trusted relationships between individuals and between individuals and organization, uh, a world that that is uh, that that favors positive innovation and value creation, and that also creates new knowledge and new collective opportunities, thanks to the fact that people are empowered to use uh, their own data. Now, we'll see that, of course, there's a number of things that can break down those, this chain, uh, and this, we've been looking at how it, it could look in different cases. So the second uh, excerpt we've chosen uh, is one uh, by uh, Sanna, who's, who's been working on hackers and a lot of interesting militant uh, uh, computer stuff, but uh, is now defaulting to the no data vision. Um, and it's an interesting vision because it's not a, a, a it's sort of not a negative vision. It's a, the vision of people who chose to uh, uh, go to, to create this no data vision and who contacted uh, their, their lights with pigeons and people flocked, that's uh, probably the right word here, flocked to this nation where people make decisions based on conversation and uh, conversations and, and personal reaction. So that was about how you are empowered or how you feel empowered to be your own self, to make your own decisions, to draw your own plans. Um, and uh, so we looked at empowering cases. Uh, interestingly enough, all of them, uh, we worked in subgroups, focused on health. And health data empowering myself. And, but they came up with slightly different visions. Uh, one of them was very much around predictive healthcare, and it could fall into the, the creepy or comfy category depending on, on twists. On, on the story, so my, the, the whole idea being that non-medical data would be able to help me uh, or help physicians or help whoever uh, or whatever system detect problems before they occur, before you have to turn to the medical data because there's a crisis and a doctor needs to be involved. Uh, the other one was much around, more around the collective part, which is how you can you can mac, uh, match uh, air quality, crowdsourced air quality data with health uh, data and create both personal uh, insights as on to where you should go uh, or not go, what you should do or not do, and collective insights on the, the actual relationship between the two or on the fact that this specific area within a city might be less healthy for people with asthma, for example. Uh, and then there was something that was uh, another model that, that was more about how things should be done and looked at, looking at decisional models. Um, so if, if we remember the, this story, we, we could also look at uh, ways uh, through which empowerment happens or, or doesn't happen. So uh, two very, very rapid scenarios. So we have the ideal self-data model. Now, the first uh, way in which it could easily break is that you have data, people have access to data, but they have no means, no knowledge, no literacy, uh, not, uh, not, uh, nothing that is requested to actually make sense, personally or collectively make sense of this data. So I have this data and it's just one more digital hassle. Now I have to manage this thing and I have no idea what it is uh, and it's like, Okay, thank you very much, but why? Um, and so the, if, if we are in this situation where people have their data but do not feel empowered because they have no tools or no knowledge to use it, then of course it's not that great for innovation. Then of course um, it actually may create more uh, defiance and, and, and more and a kind of stalemate be between people and organizations because you feel that they've given you something, but that they haven't gone the whole uh, way into empowering. But the other way of working around this absence of knowledge, we call it the selfie data, 
uh, scenario is to say, no, but don't worry, you don't have the knowledge, but there are really, really good people, uh, namely platforms, namely GAFAs, who know how to help you with all this data that you have gathered into your personal spaces. So just hand them to us and it'll, it'll be fine and life will become so convenient. So the, the difference between the, the totally green or rosy scenario and this is just that this data that you have as an individual, you've entrusted it to Google. And it's doing such a great job for your daily life that you feel comfortable. You feel comfy until you, until you don't, maybe. Um, and so we ended up thinking about what would be the conditions for this world to maybe work in a way that could be felt as being empowering for people and, and individuals. Uh, starting again with an, with an example, uh, with a scenario where, uh, what was her name? Yeah. Well, Linda it has all this data, but it's totally overwhelmed. And the only thing that she actually ends up doing with the data is managing the data. So storing it, restoring it, uh, modifying, well, not doing anything meaningful with it, but just managing it, as, you know, as all photographs or things like that. Um, and so we, can, we could have, I'm not going to describe this one, but we could have one of the scenarios, which is, of course, uh, the scenario where it breaks because people are willing to do that. Uh, they are knowledgeable enough to do that, but organizations don't contribute with the data. So you have the knowledge, you have the ability, uh, but you don't have the data. And so what this could give birth to is a subworld of militant hackers who are really empowered with their data and the rest of the world who actually goes on as today. Uh, so just to finish, uh, what the group came up with was uh, a number of interesting components for uh, my data world's infrastructure. Uh, the first one started from the premise that we would all be wearing implants, and implants means you don't switch them off. Implants means you, as a person, probably become hackable. So. There's, there's a real question on, on how, what the uh, technical stack is there, uh, there is uh, so that uh, this doesn't come to happen. Uh, and for some reason, but I can't really remember why, uh, in this scenario, there was the idea that uh, it was a scenario that requested liquid democracy. Liquid democracy meaning that you don't elect someone for everything, but that you choose who or whether to delegate a specific decision on a specific topic to a specific person, and that is replayed uh, for almost every decision. Uh, the second uh, group worked on uh, the concept of identity um, and, and going fairly deeply into what we mean by identity, that, that is our personal self, sense of self and the way in which we represent ourselves towards different uh, audiences or groups of, of, of persons, and both being determined by what we have inside of, of us, but also by our relationships to, to others and, and to, other, to other communities. And the interesting thing that it came up with was the need for a combination between the powerful things happening at the edges of the networks in our personal spaces being both computing and ways of representing ourselves of wearing masks uh, towards different uh, different masks towards different audiences and a collective space because if we have that then the question is but how does unexpected knowledge emerge if every if everybody's holding their own data and not sharing anything and um, and so the, uh, the collect the, what we call the space of waves is the place where is a commons where a lot of those personal prob probably anonymized data uh, are being mixed and matched all the time trying to produce emergent knowledge but that is probably collectively or openly accessible and of course this takes governance uh, and we didn't go very much into that there was an interesting idea but probably needs to be described that uh, 
uh, detail that we would have we would tax data centers uh, so as to make money for research and maybe to create and manage uh, the space of wave here. That's basically what came out of that work workshop. I hope that Atuka and Nina are agree on that. I think you described it very well that it was uh, what we ended up with was uh, kind of sketches. Because yes. uh, because uh, the complexity of the whole thing was of course obvious to all of us that if you try to start thinking about uh, infrastructures that don't exist, it's 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 an overwhelming task, and I think that our uh, our participants did a very good job. So that's it. <laughs>